Please join us in welcoming co-founder and CEO of Legends, Stephanie Daniel. Hi, I'm Stephanie Daniel, co-founder and CEO of Legends. I initially combined my love of the world and data by studying economics at Cambridge and 15 years in global investment banking. My co-founder Shana and I bonded over the shared traveler pain point of why is it so hard to find the things that fit our tastes, our values, our preferences. We landed on it being a data fragmentation problem and then soon realized how pervasive this pain point is for the industry. How do we get to know our customers well enough to be able to personalize? Today, I'll cover our view of consumer preference data as the foundation to be able to deliver the personalization that today's traveler truly wants, the opportunity we have to unlock zero party data, Legend's unique approach with travel DNA, some segment specific use cases, and validation that consumers are ready. Let's imagine a world of ideal personalization for today's traveler. I won't say hyper personalization, but we say instant individualization. Someone else referenced that today particularly for millennial and below demographics. They want to feel seen. They want to be met where they are, a seamless experience tailored to them online and offline. In other sectors, consumers have become used to proactive predictive algorithms that know us better than we know ourselves. But travel's traditionally been predicated on customer search, field inputs, and transaction versus human-centered. So providers are unable to optimize the conversion in the magic opportunity window of the consumer missing out on revenue, loyalty, and experience. So what would be required to deliver this? To simplify the core building blocks, we have to start with the foundation of a robust system to actually collect and update in real time the data on our customers and their preferences, like travel patterns, hobbies, lifestyle. This has to be mapped to the data schema of the content that a brand is trying to sell. And obviously, uh, it has to have the right architecture, tools, and systems to be able to act upon the data. We know that AI can supercharge this, but again, as we've heard repeatedly today, AI is only as powerful as the data underlying it. The problem is the foundation is broken. Our industry's current consumer data ecosystem is fragmented, costly, inefficient, and ineffective. We have first-party data based on the direct interactions someone has with a brand. That's a very limited view of a consumer's full travel and lifestyle preferences across all brands, and it's siloed typically in systems and tools. You've got third-party data collected by others. It's generic, static, expensive, and typically not that actionable. For many brands, customer data is about two-thirds third-party, and some spend over two million, even though less than a third feel confident about its quality. The problem is becoming even more urgent given privacy regulations and the impending deprecation of third-party cookies. There's a huge opportunity to unlock zero-party data. That means data that int is intentionally and proactively shared by a consumer to a brand in return for a value exchange, like personalization or rewards. Studies show that more than 80% of people want to share more, but we just don't have easy, trusted tools. A current way of collecting this could be a survey or manual input, but we know that's not how today's consumer wants to engage. It's not fully accurate, and it's not updated dynamically. We see a brand's ideal mix shifting to over half zero-party data, which could cut their costs in half. The future of zero-party data has to be automated, trusted, real-time, and complete. So how do we get there? Well, we all know we live in an era where our growing digital footprint actually authentically represents our preferences, who we are, what we like, what we do. But the data about us gets locked in the silos of all these different platforms and tools that we use across all stages of the journey, particularly in travel. Legends platform unlocks this data through our travel DNA technology. With a streamlined permissioning process, integrating with the brand's existing user experience, a brand can offer travelers a choice of multiple automated inputs, like photos, calendar, social, or a fast gamified experience. Our engine can also take a brand's existing first party data and apply our methodology. We can also map it with the desired content from a brand. What are you trying to sell them? So we can then deliver the deepest value based preference data set ever seen, more accurate micro segmentations and audiences for higher ROI, and match recommendations of exactly what to surface, to who, when, and on what channel, optimizing that magic moment of conversion. 
So let's take a look first at creating a profile by sharing a demo of our web-based tool, leveraging calendar input. You'll see here a simple user experience, very familiar permissioning, and with one click, she's allowing access. We then instantly deliver back to the traveler core insights like average flight spend, hotel spend, preferred brands, preferences like boutique retreats, where you've actually been, as well as activities, preferences such as wellness, dining preferences, Now, imagine what you can do when you have this travel DNA. We can personalize exactly the right recommendation for the right traveler. So we deliver this travel DNA technology as a B2B solution to help brands know their customers better. So let's take a look in the context of brand experiences and some specific use cases. As mentioned, we seamlessly integrate in a brand's existing flow. So imagine a button, a link, anywhere can be included in your app, web, email, or text. The resulting insights have been explicitly consented to be shared to the brand. So we can enable enriching from a typically generic profile like this to over 100 valuable actionable data fields like this. This can be customized to a brand's needs and starting with our core DNA layer. This enables brands to finally know their customers while respecting privacy and adhering to the increasing regulation, ultimately getting to a new level of personalization, increasing revenue, loyalty, and experience. Clearly, this technology can deliver value across segments, anyone that can benefit from knowing your customer better. Let's highlight a few. For a hotel loyalty platform, we can help increase customer lifetime value. The challenge is knowing their customer well enough to know what's the right content at the right time to maximize conversion before, during, and after a trip. We heard that today. So in this demo, we can see how our API solution can be integrated in a hypothetical hotel brand's loyalty app here. <laughs> a consumer can choose to sync my photos with one click. Again, a very familiar permissioning process here, not that much change in user behavior. Potentially, I could choose to add my calendar, similar permissioning that we just saw, also my social, and many other sources. Once I've done that, I can now receive a cool profile that's really a reflection of who I am as a traveler. I know I like week-long family, family trips to beaches in January, boutique hotels, yoga, and sushi. And now I can see, based on this data, exactly the brands within this loyalty group that fit me. What are the hotels I should look at? And while I'm on a trip, what's the right dining or experiences? I'll also note this data can be fully integrated with the hotels, PMS or CRM, CRM or other systems. As another example, for a travel advisor platform, we can help better qualify leads and convert faster to higher value sales. Because why should it take 10 phone calls and email exchanges to get to know a customer and then another 10 hours to find the right trip to propose. Our demo here shows an example with Fora's platform. So we go here from, from a blank profile and now a really easy link that the advisor can share to the traveler with one click. It's now fully optimized and you can see the full DNA profile. And based on this, a traveler can now see, an advisor can now see the right recommendation to suggest to the traveler. Either outright, or we also have a chat interface that we call Ask Dina that's not showing right now. So you might be wondering, that's great. Hopefully you can all agree that those insights are valuable for the brand. But you might be wondering, is the consumer ready for this? And what truly motivates them? So we originally validated our technology by building a consumer-facing app where more than 90% of people created the profile. We take a data-driven approach to our product. So we've taken ongoing surveys. I can share here some additional findings that are not yet published. Over 83% of people want to share their data in return for personalization or rewards. 
three in four motivated by discounts, one in three by, re by recommendations, and almost half by the profile itself. The preference for automated methods is higher in younger demographics and slightly lower in Europe. Consumers preferred calendar, email, and photos over sources like social media. It's clear that current shifts in society, privacy, and data mean the time is now for zero-party data and for legends travel DNA. We'd like to say we're the data layer that puts the human first, and we're ready to power a new era of personalization in partnership with the ecosystem. Our mission-driven team is all about driving authentic connection with ourselves, each other, and the world. We've received recognition from the industry. We've delivered to our first customers. We've engaged with some of the largest brands in the industry, and we're ready to select our partners to create and collaborate in the next phase. Please reach out, and I look forward to discussing further. Thank you. Well, can you use like a simplified example to help people understand the difference between zero, first, and third party data? Sure. Because that'll help us level set. Yeah, sure. So um, if I tell a brand that I like yoga, or if I okay. select that on a survey, uh, then that would be zero party data because I've, I've proactively shared that data with them. Uh, if it's first party data, I might have booked a yoga trip with that brand, so they know that about me because of that transaction. But if I booked it with another brand, they would have no idea. Second party data would be if they bought that data from a partner brand. And third party data would be um, there are many service providers that aggregate different data sources and then charge to provide it. And so each of those data sources have different costs associated with it and then different quality level signals. Got it. One of the uh, use cases that you showed, like an example of how you onboard a travel, uh, kind of how you create the travel DNA mm -hmm. is by kind of sharing your, uh, like your photo, photos. Uh, have you seen any like pushback on that? And uh, because there's a lot in like opening up that to a third party uh, a person would have. So any pushback on that? And then secondly, what are you exactly capturing from the photos? Yeah, great question. So. There's this kind of the theme called the privacy personalization paradox, right? Mm. Where we know today's consumer is craving more personalization in everything that we do, but people also have a heightened awareness of what's happening with their data now. And so we see we're at this kind of societal shift where people want to share data with brands for personalization, but they want to do it in a really trusted, controlled way. And they haven't got the tools to do it right now. Uh, and so um, that's the gap that Legends is filling. And then the other, the approach that we're taking is meeting the customer at their point of comfort, at their, their kind of moment of need. So that's why we provide multiple source options. So it okay. could be photos, could be calendar, could be email. And for someone that doesn't want to automate, we also have a cool like gamified way where you can react to photos that we put forward and then swipe through, almost like Tinder for travel. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's picking up on that theme of meeting the customer at their point of need. Um, photos is where we started because we take 5 billion photos a day just on our phones and every photo you take has this metadata like latitude, longitude, date and time. Right. And it felt to us that was just being lost in the ether and not structured in a useful way. So that's where we started and it's particularly relevant for travel. Um, and again, we can, just, we can create so much from just the data behind the photos without actually even looking at, oh, this is Vivek on a beach, for right. example. There is a whole module of, um, that we can do called computer vision, which does look at the content of the, the photo data. Um, actually, in the standard permissioning, you have access to be able to do that. But the way we would implement is um, ask explicit consent for that. Got it. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, please send them over to Stephanie. And actually, one of the questions is, there's the one that I was also thinking about is, can a traveler, it seems like you're putting the control back to the traveler. Yeah. On what, and so can they choose which brand to share what level of information? Exactly. That's okay. the, the foundation of what we're building is around privacy and security and the traveler being in control of what they're sharing with who, when. Okay. And so that's why in the, in the B2B implementation, it's within the brand flow. So you're opting in at that moment in time to say, yes, I do want to share more with this brand. Um, and that's why it's explicitly consented data, and yet you can opt out at any time. One of the things that I really liked about this is that whenever those questions come, like when you're trying to sign up for a program, they'll always ask you some static yeah. questions. Yeah. 
And I've always thought about it that that was at that moment in time. Yep. But I have changed and I don't know when I signed up for it. Yep. Do you think about that as a travel DNA being a static or an evolving dynamic So I picture? think that's a huge pain point of some of the data that's available now, right? It's static, it's point right. in time. That's the opposite of what travel is and how we evolve as travelers and what we want um, is dynamic. And so yeah, travel DNA is, um, is dynamic. It's updated with every single new experience that you have. Um, so that is continually updated in real time. And so our, the insights that we can deliver to a brand are continually updated in real time. Gotcha. Um, if I'm a travel brand, brand in the audience, and if I want to get started, what does that process look like? Can yeah. you talk to that a little bit? And maybe also talk about like what are the investments they need to make and what's the business model? Yeah. So it'll help us uh, think through those. Yeah, next steps. of course. So think about it. So we're a B2B SaaS provider, so you can license our technology. Um, a simple annual subscription, typically based on the expected number of profiles to be created. Um, the first phase is reach out for a discovery call. We'll share more about the product, right? We'll learn more about your strategic focus, your use cases. Um, then the second phase would be, okay, what does your ideal data set look like? Because we can customize the travel DNA to what you need. Also, we can look at the exact content and recommendations that you want to be surfacing and match that. Um, and then we can design a, a proof of concept together. And that could even start as a non-integrated solution um, where we can do some white label testing, um, we can also uh, you know, start with our data enrichment product where we can actually ingest your existing first party data, apply our methodology, and you can start seeing the DNA insights. Um, we can do that as a foundation and then move on to the additional data capture zero party tool. Pretty cool. Um, is there an example of a industry that is really harnessing zero party data? Outside of, of obviously outside of travel. Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's been referenced a few times today. Like retail and e-commerce is further ahead as it relates to customer data and personalization. I think zero-party data has been harnessed. An example I would put out there is Sephora. They they mm. have a, a very engaged loyalty program where people input a lot about their preferences. They upload photos of you know their skin, etc., to be recommended the right products at the right time. Um, but still, there aren't really any other examples out there about automating the process. And I truly believe that consumers today don't, we don't want to fill out surveys, but yet we want people to know about us. So how can we make that a really automated, one-click, easy process? Wonderful. Please help me thank Stephanie from Legends. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Vic. Thanks.